Hello from Sawtooth Outfitters. Today in the video you're about to watch, you're going to learn all about our hot tent that we rent for winter camping in the Superior National Forest and the Boundary Waters. We're going to show you how to set the tent up properly, how to set up the stove and get your tent nice and warm. Uh, we'll try to answer all the questions you may have before you show up and pick up your tent so that you're well prepared to get on your way uh, for your winter camping experience. So let's uh, start from the beginning. Now when you find the spot that you want to pitch your hot tent in the backcountry, you're most likely going to be dealing with quite a bit of snow. So it's important to prep your space, eyeing out the footprint of your tent, shoveling it out, and packing the snow down. This will give you plenty of space to work, a lot easier than trying to set it up in all this deep powdery snow. So we're going to get to it. Make sure that you're going to be familiar with the contents of this bag before you even get out and start to set up your tent. The main bulk of the interior is filled with the wall tent itself, but in two separate compartments we've divided a few items up for your convenience when you're unpacking. In a small bag you'll find two unions. These are a three-part connector between your footing poles and your peak pole which will go across the length of the tent. You'll have two of those. Also in that smaller bag you'll have a bundle of your guy lines. Three of these with uh, orange clips will go on one side of the tent, three on the other, so you'll have six total with one leather guy line. Two guy lines are sewn into the front wall of the tent. You want to make sure to guy those out, but they're not included in this bag. We'll talk about those more in the setup portion of the video. Also in the small bag, you'll have your stakes. In the larger bag, which will be in the, uh, all of your tent poles, and those are all a little unique based on their purpose. The four end poles, which will go from your ridge, will be closed on the end. The four-person tent has a footer. The three-person tent will just have a closed end and an open end to go to the union. Your ridge pole, which will look similar but a little shorter, will be open on both ends so that it can also link up with each end of the union. Lastly, you'll have two poles for your side walls. Those poles are easy to identify because they're closed on the end and they also have the gold joints. You'll have seven of these smaller poles, which look completely different, are easy to identify, and they will be used three on each side to support your walls and one horizontally on the back to guide out the rear of the tent. Pretty simple, and that's everything that will be in your bag. So once you've pulled the canvas wall tent over the frame, you have to guy out the side walls. You first do that by sliding this horizontal pull through the four sleeves on the side. Now these sleeves are broken up in three places. And these three places are where you're going to clip each of your guy lines. You'll have this orange clip. It's very simple. Just like that. We're going to do all three and guy them out. You may have been wondering what this small pole is for. That's going to clip in the base and come up into this component of the guy line. When we guy it out, that will provide increased structural stability so that when you have high winds, you're not going to have the wall of this tent blowing inside, especially to this corner where the stove will be hot. So there are multiple ways to guy out the sidewalls of your tent. As you can see, for ease, we've just used some of the natural vegetation that is here. You can also use the stakes that will come in the tent bag, or you can build snow anchors. Uh, any way to secure the sidewalls so that a high wind won't rip that out of whatever it's anchored to. If you're unfamiliar with the way that these cams work, once you've anchored it securely, 
you can tighten and it will hold tension. That will help you get these cords as tight as possible which will help the overall stability of the tent. Guiding out the rear of the tent is a little different than the sidewalls. You'll use one of these small poles, slide through the sleeves, of which there are two, but you want to use the special leather sleeve to capture the guy line. From there, you can stake out the rear. If there are no natural anchors to connect your guy line to, and the snow is too thick or too fluffy to get a stake into, you can put a snow anchor in. What we're gonna do is we're gonna dig a little hole And then I've secured a piece of wood to our guy line, which I'm going to place into the hole and pack the snow down. Now, it helps to have a large piece of wood or something like that. Uh, otherwise, if you use the stake, it would just pull right out. Then you can come back, tighten up your system, and you're good to go. Now one important thing to note is that these black snow flaps that go around the perimeter of the tent, those are meant to be angled out and snow piled on top of them. These, this is what, the snow is what anchors the actual tent to the ground, the tent walls. You have anchors in the guy lines and snow anchoring the walls themselves. So make sure that you adequately cover those snow flaps in their entirety so that all of your walls are ankle anchored and no wind gusts will come up under your wall and lift it up. If you do it right, it will be very secure.